Chapter 3. The Creation of Human Animals. To be able to control these evil angels, jinns, slash, souls, hyphen, you, even more efficiently, to be able to discipline you and teach you to be good, God decided to create human animals, that would blend in with the rest of nature. These creatures would be living animals, breathing air and having the same body functions as the others. They would also have to have the same selfish animal instincts, that is living by survival of the fittest, but would not be evil. Animals are not evil, like you, they are only animals, and do not know any better, than to live by following their natural, animal instincts. So God created Adam, man, then created Eve, woman, from Adam's rib, making her flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, and he gave the simple story to Moses in Genesis, and later to Muhammad, in the Quran. Listing the family trees, of all the people, would have made Genesis, the Bible and the Quran into a library of 10 to 20 volumes, and they are already so big, that many people allow Satan to intimidate them into not reading them, because of their size. Once the human animals had been created, God breathed life into them, human life. Surah 15, verse 29. Lucifer and his angels. Opening parenthesis. You. Closing parenthesis. Were then given a choice, and had to decide, whether or not to submit to human limitations and being reprogrammed to be good, little by little over many human lifetimes and thousands of earth years, or to sit and wait for the fire to destroy you, Surah 15, verse 30. All the evil angels, jinns, you, except Lucifer, Ibli, himself, chose to submit to being locked inside of Adam's and Eve's, making human plus beings, Revelation 3, verse 7. He that closes and no man opens and he that opens and no man closes. Later, when Jesus said to his disciples, These things I do, you will do and more than these, John 14, verse 12, he was referring to, if and when they earned their pardons, they would be given back their divinity and superhuman powers, which would allow them to do even more incredible things, than he could do whilst locked inside the Son of Mary. Remember, that he too had had to submit to human limitations, so that people could see him, and follow his example. I am the way you have to be. The reason that Lucifer, now called Satan, is so powerful, is because he refused to submit to human limitations, being locked inside of a human animal, and learning to be good, so he still has his memory and superhuman powers. He refused, because of his incredible arrogance, which was what caused him to be banished from heaven, along with you, in the first place, Surah 7, verse 11 and Surah 15. Verse 31 to 44. Satan, I believe, asked God to reprieve him, until the last day, and the Lord granted his wish, so that he could use Satan, to tempt the human plus beings, you. Satan swore to attack you all, by seduction, lies, etc., from in front and from behind, and from your left and from your right, Surah 7, verse 15 to 20 and Surah 15, verse 44, and from inside the enemy within, because he considers all of you to be traitors to him, for blaming him, and having submitted to human limitations, and trying to learn to be good. That is why he is now your enemy. Armageddon Survival Plan, Key. For printed version please contact Ja. At JaTruth.net. If you follow him now, he will reward you with the only thing that he has to offer, that is worldly material treasures that you can not keep, and animal pleasures of the flesh. If you do follow him, it will be into the fire. Execution. If you strive to be good, Satan will attack you, from every direction, to try to pull you back into his control, because, when you do good in the world, you become a threat to him. That is when you need 100% faith, and with that faith, God's protection from evil. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, Surah 2. Verse 257. Whenever you let Satan deceive you, into thinking that you can not win against injustice, just because you are vastly outnumbered, and completely surrounded, for example fighting City Hall Ephesians 6, verse 12, when, if only you didn't let Satan deceive you, you could win, 
by trusting in God and by wearing his armor, you are telling God that you think Satan is more powerful than he is. That is ridiculous, because God sent Satan here and keeps him here, against his will, which is why, over thousands of years, Satan has become more and more bitter and twisted. He is now so sick, and depraved, that I feel sorry for him. You can always win against injustice, with enough faith. As long as you talk to God, follow his orders and have 100% faith, because he will be with you, every step of the way. That does not mean that it will be easy, but then no one said that life in prison would be easy. You will have to fight, every step of the way, but, with 100% faith, you can use the force, to overcome all obstacles. When you are doing God's will for you, the entire world cannot stop you from winning. If you lose your faith, you will lose the battle. However, if you keep going forwards and do not let Satan scare you, by holding on to your faith in God's protection, following his will, you cannot lose. In any case, these problems in your lives are only tests, to see whether you are willing to fight for God, against Satan. You should not see these things as problems, but as an opportunity to earn points towards your mission. There are no such things as problems. They are only solutions waiting to be found. They are only problems in your mind, or frame of mind. If you do not recognize them as problems, then they are not problems, but solutions waiting to be found, and you should be grateful for these opportunities, to fight to show your worth, and these evil people, what you are made of. It is how you face up to these tests and overcome them, that builds your character, spiritual strength, willpower makes you stronger and makes you who you are. Don't fight for selfish reasons, and stay calm, because your human emotions, fear, anger, aggression, etc., will cloud your judgment, and block God's messages and the force, and you will lose. The force can only be used for knowledge and defense, not for aggressive physical attack. You will lose, because Satan will use your anger and aggression against you, by causing you to say things, that you do not really mean, to people who may have helped you, if you had not insulted and alienated them, with your anger and aggression. Once you have established who is friend, and who is foe, fight your foe, no matter what position he may hold, remember that all men were created equal, and still are, in God's eyes. Don't make people into false gods and worship them, you have been commanded not to dash. 10 Commandments If you do, you will defeat yourself, before you start. If you fight with human emotions, you will block out the force, and then Satan can sidetrack you, lead you off in another direction, and keep you bogged down, arguing with someone who could probably have helped, and speeded you on your way. Fight with your spirit and determination, not with your fists, except in self-defense. Keep calm and smiling, at all times, listen to God's guidance then go forward and conquer. It is that simple, these things are sent to try, test, us. Do not complicate matters, with organized religions and superstitious nonsense. Keep it simple. God good. And devil. Evil. That is all that there is to it. Organized religions were invented by Satan, to deceive you, and complicate everything. Don't let him fool you. You have to fight for good. God, against evil, to pass tests, and to prove to God that you have genuinely changed sides, and can be trusted. Fighting with Satan, against God, is what got you sent here, so the only way you can prove to God, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that you have genuinely changed sides and want to be good, is by fighting, here and now, for God, good, against the devil, evil. Look for fights, the bigger the better. The bigger the fight, the more points you can earn towards your mission. Look for fights that need fighting, for the benefit of everyone, not just for your own selfish reasons. Even if you do not look for fights, they will come to you. There is so much injustice in this world, that you are bound to come up against it, and when you do, that will be your fight. It will then be up to you, as to whether you decide to fight, for good, God, against injustice, evil devil, and, by winning, help to make the world a better place, for yourself and everyone to live in, or to surrender to, and suffer from the injustice, 
thereby allowing it to continue and grow, making the world even more evil and unjust, for yourself, and everyone else to have to live in, and suffer from. All that is necessary for evil to triumph, is, for those who want to be good, to do nothing to stop it. If you decide to fight, as you should, each battle that you fight will train and prepare you, for the next one, which will be bigger and more difficult and which will, in turn, train you for the next one, which will be still bigger and so on, against people who are more and more powerful and evil. However, you must never make it personal, or lose your temper, self-control. Don't get angry, get determined. Always remain humble, even in victory, because you could not have won without God's help. Then, when you have passed the ultimate test, which is to be like Jesus, in thought, word and deed, at all times, under all circumstances, always doing for others, you can go home. It is that simple. It may be simple, but it is not easy. You have to prove yourself, and fight for your right to go home, against all odds, but with 100% faith, the force will be with you, always, to protect you every step of the way provided that you do not lose your faith, in his protection. People say, if there is a God, let him prove it to me. Just who do they think that they are, that God should not need to prove anything to them? It is they who are going to be executed, not God, and is exactly the same stupid, arrogant attitude, that got them sent here in the first place. If you apologize and have real faith, then God will prove, to each and every one of you, that he is real. John 7 verse 17. You will not see him, because you need to keep faith. Human plus beings, as you know them, are a combination of four things, and they are, 1. A human animal, the body that you are temporarily using, with its own separate life, human and mortal, John 3, verse 6. 2. A soul, their real you, which is spirit slash energy, venusian and immortal, John 3, verse 6. 3. The Holy Spirit. 4. The Devil. The two telepathic voices that every normal human plus being has in his head. When a human baby is born, it has no soul, but it is alive and breathing, with its own human animal life, Surrey 15, verse 30, before the soul enters the body. Some never have a soul, because they are so substandard that they are of no use, being unable to be used to teach a soul anything not even humility. At the other end of the scale, a totally senile person is a living human animal, left alive, after the soul has left it. The human body is nothing more than a very sophisticated, by human standards, organic living computer, that self-reproduces and self-repairs, if it is not too badly damaged. It is a combination of smaller computers, for example brain, kidneys, liver, etc collectively making up the whole, pre-programmed to have selfish animal instincts, that your soul has to learn to overcome. The physical human brain operates the body and its emotions, but your mind and its feelings belong to your soul. That is why Jesus said that the flesh is worthless, and that it is only the spirit, soul, their real you that has value, John 3, verse 6 and John 6, verse 63. It would serve absolutely no useful purpose for a soul to enter into a baby, whilst it is inside a woman's body, for months. The reason that a soul is placed inside a body, as has already been explained, is to learn, and it could not possibly learn anything, inside a baby that is inside a womb, inside a woman's body. A short period of time after the baby's birth, it undergoes a change, and suddenly has recognition and awareness. That is when the soul has entered the body along with the Holy Spirit and the devil, the enemy within. The Holy Spirit, or good. God's voice, is planted inside the human animal body, with, and connected to the soul. It is the soul's telepathic connection with God. To try to simplify things, for you to be able to understand more easily, if you can think, for a moment, of God, as being like a master computer in memory bank, fountain of knowledge, with the Holy Spirit as the soul's connection and personal computer terminal, linked to the master one, by which, each soul is told and taught privately, individually and personally, what is good and what is evil, by the Lord, then you will have a better understanding of how things work. 
you can request and receive information from God, by learning to use your telepathic connection, the Holy Spirit, 1 John 2, verse 27. Seek and you will find, but only if you seek with all your heart, Jeremiah 29, verse 13, and in childlike humility. Unfortunately, all you ever do is to ask Him to give you this, or that, or to do this, or that, for you. You never ask Him what you can do for Him, do you? Isn't that very selfish, and one-sided? The other voice, that everyone has in their head, and knows perfectly well is evil, is obviously the devil's voice. God will only answer your questions, if they are the right kind of questions, and if you ask Him in the right way, with the correct attitude, and then only if the answer will help you spiritually not materially, unless it will help you, in some way, to complete the task he has set you or as a genuine need, not a want. He will answer you, when you are ready for the answer, which may not be when you think you are ready for it. You may get an answer immediately, or in an hour, or a week, a month, a year, or even ten or more, but you will get the answer exactly when you are ready for it, and you will be reminded as you were given the answer, of exactly when it was that you asked the question. Then you should realize, yourself, that when you asked the question, you weren't ready for the answer, and first had to be taught to understand the answer, and were only ready for the answer, when you were given it. That's when you really ought to say, thank you. He will help you with everything you do, if you ask him to, but he will not help you to do anything that is wrong for you, or anyone else. So. If you don't get an answer, you are asking the wrong things, and or in the wrong way, or you are not yet ready for the answer. If and when you start to do His will, He will also provide for you materially, but only if you believe He will, and then only what you need, to be able to do His will, and probably not what you want, which would be wrong for you. If you have more than you need, someone else, Satan, is paying you. Learn to want only what you need to be able to do His will. God will only give you what you need, and no more, so that He can keep you on a short leash and under control, to enable Him to guide you, more efficiently. If He gave you more than you need, He would lose control of you and you may go astray, being then less dependent on His supply continuing. This short leash situation also lets Him test your faith, to the last second, before He supplies your need. If you are doing His work, He knows what you are going to need before you do, and is already arranging the supply, before you even feel the need. That is why Jesus told the man who wanted to be perfect, that, as well as keeping the commandments, as he said he had done all his life, he must sell his possessions and give the money to the poor. The poor was the disciples' collective purse, kitty or bag, that Judas kept, John 12, verse 6, thereby placing himself completely in God's hands, because only then could God teach provide for and control him efficiently, Matt 19, verse 21. When you work for him, and thereby your own salvation, it is a partnership, you have to complete the task, and he has to supply the tools and materials. He will, otherwise, how could he expect you to finish the job? You just have to have faith, and trust him. He will not fail you, but he will make you wait, until the last second, to test your faith, in him and his supply. It is like being on a magical mystery tour, and can take you anywhere on earth, wherever he can use you and teach you best. It is fun and magic, real magic. God has to provide for you, and for you to eat and drink, in order to keep body and soul together. So a human animal body is only a prison cell for the soul, within a prison, earth, millions of miles from home, a maximum security, but open prison from which no one has ever escaped, and from which no one ever will. That is why mankind, even if allowed, would never find human life anywhere, except on this planet. There is life throughout the universe, but not human life, because the human body is not needed anywhere else, except on this prison planet, to serve the sole purpose for which it was designed and created. God created the human plus being, human animal body plus soul so that he can discipline, the word discipline, disciple and discipline, the soul being, and punish it, if and when it is wrong. A soul, in its free state, is energy and therefore invisible, to the human eye. 
it does not feel heat, cold, hunger, thirst or pain, in any and all of its various forms, and therefore cannot be punished and disciplined, only destroyed. Unlike humans, it has no needs, Revelation 7, verse 16. It is not possible to teach an evil soul, in its free state, to be good, by sending it to bed with no supper, because it does not get hungry. It is not possible to smack its backside, because it does not have one, and, in any case, it does not feel pain. The soul is normally locked inside the human animal body, for the lifetime of the body, and is locked in, in such a way, that it becomes an integral part of the body, Revelation 3, verse 7, and therefore feels whatever the body feels. Then, by inflicting pain on the body, the soul feels it, and so, can be punished, to varying, but exact degrees, depending upon what it deserves, by the various types and severities of pain, for example physical, mental, heartache, hardship, disabilities and deformities, etc. This is all designed to teach humility, and the destroying of self, selfishness. All pain is attached to the self, when the self goes, so does all pain. Life is a perpetual crucifixion, designed to destroy your selfishness, greed and materialism. God talks to the soul by telepathy, using the good voice, which is the same voice that Satan, using the lies of religions and superstitious nonsense, has deceived you all into believing is your conscience. It is not your conscience, it is God talking to each and every one of you, by telepathy, via your connection, the Holy Spirit. Many of you say, why doesn't God talk to me? He does. To each and every one of you, but you don't listen to him. Your real conscience is you, and what you decide to do in a test. When Satan tempts you, and God tells you, with his good voice, not to do what he says, and that what Satan says is wrong, what you then decide to do, is your conscience. You are your conscience, not the good voice, and you are each, independently, responsible for your own soul. It doesn't matter what everyone else does, they are not responsible for your soul. You are. They are responsible for theirs, whether they believe it or not. Satan talks to your animal body, and has deceived you into thinking that you are no more than a crude, smelly animal, with obscene body functions, when you are really spirit, and only temporarily imprisoned in the crude, animal body that you are using, at the moment, which has to eat, go to the toilet get told and wrinkled and die, etc., you seem to want to believe Satan, and that you are no better than a smelly animal. You don't seem to want to be divine again. Satan tries to talk you into enjoying what feels physically good, to the animal, for example sex, egotism, materialism, selfishness, competition and superiority, the inflicting of pain, killing, beating, depravity and perversion, etc to try to get you as low as he is, so that you will never be able to go home, and he is the serpent, always eating dust, as low as you can get, Genesis 3, verse 14. You, being really spirit, will never get true and lasting joy, or satisfaction, from animal pleasures, as nice as they can be. It is self-defeating and a vicious circle. The more you try, the more you feel you need, and the worse things become. A perfect example of this is an infomania, where the subject confuses love with sex, which, being animal, does not bring true satisfaction and spiritual fulfillment. Satan then, from within, deceives them into thinking, that, if they get enough sex, they will be fulfilled, and they try desperately to get enough sex. Unfortunately, Satan is a liar, and has tricked them, once again, and they run around desperately, in a vicious circle. The more sex they get, the less fulfilled they feel, so they try even harder and harder, becoming more and more lost, lonely, desperate and confused. You are not an animal, you are spirit. Animal pleasures alone will never satisfy your soul's ear, need for spiritual love, and fulfillment. God, the source of spiritual love, God is love, is the answer to every question, problem, or illness in your life. Once you have found God, and acknowledge Him, as your Father, you automatically have the solution to every problem and illness, so long as you have direct contact, and do what He tells you to do, His will.
learn to know the difference between real love and animal sex or lust. The reason, or logic, behind God designing human plus beings, is that the soul has to overcome and control the animal, then use it to give love, spiritual and pure, and affection, human, and to always do for the benefit of everyone. You have to overcome both the animal and spiritual selfishness, thereby making it twice as difficult to achieve, and so, consequently, making the end result twice as effective. This was the demonstration given by Christ, on the cross, when he controlled the animal that he was temporarily using, which was made by Mary's body, with God's help, and then used it, for the benefit of everyone on earth, by taking upon himself the sins of the whole world. He controlled it and used it, to the extent, that he voluntarily suffered the agony of the cross, giving up his human life, to show people the ultimate example, destroying the self, with perfect control, voluntarily, for the benefit of others. The perfect example of unselfishness. You must learn that degree of control. Two thousand years and no one understands what the demonstration of the cross really means. The cross is not to be worn around your neck. It is to be worn inside. Hold out your arms, horizontally, look in a mirror, and you will see your cross. Your cross is your selfishness, that you must overcome and destroy. The cross of self-sacrifice, that is voluntary destruction of your own selfishness, by the giving up, of your own human, material interests, for the benefit of everyone else's spiritual well-being, thereby setting a good example, for others to follow, by your deeds not words. I am the way, follow me, which did not mean getting up off your backside, and following him down the street. It means that Jesus is the way, that you all have to be, before you can follow him back to heaven, home. To do that, you must ask yourself, 24 hours a day, in every situation, what would Jesus do, say, or think, in this situation? Then, before doing, saying or thinking anything, you must wait and listen for, and to, the good voice, then go forwards, guided and protected, to victory. Whilst in incredible agony, Jesus said, Forgive them, you, all of you, because they do not know what they are doing. The people did not know what they were doing, because they were out of control, and in Satan's control, and that is the very reason why Jesus came, to show the way home, in the first place. The people were out of control, because they could not control the animals, that they were locked inside of and using, and had been deceived by Satan who used their religious arrogance against them. God talks to the soul, and tells it how to be good. Satan talks to the human animal body, that you are using, and tries to get it, to make you do what is wrong for your soul, real you. Your soul you, could easily control the body you are using, if it were not for Satan. However, because Satan is more powerful than you are, you alone can never beat him. That is why you need God's help. 24 hours a day, in direct contact, in order to get it, so that you can do his will. Once you have God's help, he controls Satan, leaving you free to control your animal and spiritual selves, and things become a lot easier. As you progress, you become more and more dependent on God, and become a child of God, adopted, until depending on him becomes second nature, and, as he helps you, your faith in, and love for him continually increase, and, with that, your inner peace. The more progress you make, the happier and more relaxed you become. Real happiness spiritual joy and spiritual satisfaction in your own progress, and achievements, both physical and spiritual. As you progress, the tests become more difficult, so the more you need God's help, as Satan tries harder and harder to pull you back. Eventually, you actually get to know God as a person, and at that point, it is no longer a belief, but a knowledge and loving personal relationship, of father and child. As you are getting to know God, Satan will be trying harder and harder to pull you back, so you will also get to know him, how he operates and just how evil, sick and insane he really is, from what he does and says to you to try to frighten, or bribe you, into stopping. Once you know Satan, and exactly how he operates, you will then be able to beat him, you have to know your enemy, before you can beat him. 
The more you get to know God, the more you see how awe-inspiringly wonderful, loving, wise, compassionate and merciful He is, and the more you wonder, how you ever managed to be so blind. You also wonder how you ever managed to live without Him, and His divine love, surrounding and protecting you from all ills. You will then learn to love, and enjoy, doing His will, and receive the reward of ever-increasing spiritual, and therefore a true happiness, joy, that no man can take away from you. Then you will be so full of love, peace and joy, that you will actually know what it feels like, and therefore the true meaning of, my cup overflows, runneth over, and fully understand, and live Psalm 23. It is wonderful beyond words, to stand, or live, in the valley of the shadow of death and fear nothing, and no one, knowing that, as long as you believe, he will protect you. Serenity is not freedom from the storm, but peace, brought about by true faith amidst the storm. This kind of peace and joy is not temporary, and fleeting, like silly human peace and happiness, it is eternal, like your soul, providing you survive the last day, and no one can take it away from you, except you yourself, if you lose your faith. The Torah, New Testament and Quran are not religious books, they are a guide to going home. Many people think that if they live, what they consider to be a good life, then God will or should help them. It does not work that way, because only God knows what is good. You are bad, or you would not be here, and so is your judgment. If you do what you think is good, it is usually wrong, not only for yourself, but for those around you, and the good of all. God, being unselfish, always does what is best for all concerned, and not just for one individual. What you think is good, may be good for your body, but not for your soul which is actually the real you, and the only thing of real importance. Why do you think God went to all this trouble, to try to save your soul, instead of just executing you, if you are only a human animal, that has to die anyway? The Lord sent you here, and He is the only one who knows exactly what each soul has to learn, on an individual basis, and therefore, He is the only one who can teach you. That is why organized religions are totally wrong because they build a wall between you and God, preventing your direct contact, and your free thinking and reasoning process. This is exactly what Satan wants, and that is why he invented organized religions. Never underestimate Satan. If you do what you want to do, you are running in circles, doing yourself and no one else any good, being lost and confused, going nowhere, continually hurting yourself and others, suffering and Satan will lead you astray and into the fire. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and, if you do God's will, and let him teach you and help you, you will then be going in a straight line. You will also no longer be trying to swim against the flow, and arrive home, in the shortest possible time, with the least possible waste of effort. He will even supply, directly, the energy force, for you to do what he wants you to do to make it even easier for you, and he will cheer you on to victory. God does not want you to be here, he wants you to learn to be good and come home, as soon as possible. That is all that he has always wanted of you. God is very sad, because he misses you and wants you to come home, but he cannot let you come home, until he is certain that you will be good, and not cause any more trouble, or hurt anyone. Micah 6, verse 8. Home has many names here, like, Heaven, Nirvana, Valhalla, Utopia, Zion, the happy hunting ground, paradise, etc. But it is not an ideological, abstract place, it is the morning star, which is a real, physical planet. How can you do God's will, unless you tell Him that you want to do His will, and ask Him to tell you exactly what He wants you to do, second by second? Ask Him privately, with thoughts, not words and listen for his reply in your mind. Also ask him to revitalize your Holy Spirit, and reinforce it. Ask him to come inside you, and give you the strength, to be able to do his will and overcome Satan, by teaching you how to use the force. No human prophet can be with you all of the time, to teach you, only God can do that, and he will, if you ask him to. He is waiting patiently, for you to ask. You are never alone. You just cannot see your guardian angels, 
but they can see you, and they know exactly what you are doing, thinking or saying, every second of your life, Job 42, verse 2. Amongst Lucifer's followers, there were many weak-willed souls, who were misled by him and deceived, by his lies, into fighting against God. There were others, who were really his friends and accomplices, who had helped him plan and organize the rebellion, and who fought eagerly with him, for their own selfish reasons. Here in prison, God wanted good to overcome evil, so he used the natural supremacy of the male species and locked Satan's friends into female human animals, and the less evil souls into male human animals, so that the males, being stronger, could control the females, and teach them to be less evil and selfish, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 1 Timothy 2, verse 11 and 12. Before we go any further, and some of you wrongly decide that I must be a woman hater, let me state the true fact, that is that I love women more than any man that has ever lived. I will explain the illogicality of your wrong assumption to you, if you make it, at the end of this chapter, so, for now, please just allow me the benefits of the doubt, accept what I say, and continue reading, for your own good. A soul, there will you, has no sex. It is the body, that the soul is temporarily using, that has a sex, so you, the soul, are neither male nor female, nor even human. If and when, a soul, locked inside a female body, learns to be a perfect woman, in God's eyes, not yours, it has then earned promotion, and the right to be locked inside a male body, in its next human lifetime, see the Gospel of Thomas, Log 114, verse 20 to 26 slash King of Kings Bible, Thomas chapter 16. Each time that a human animal body, that you have been using, dies, you are unlocked from it and taken onto the astral plane, paradise, which is here, but in another dimension, that cannot be seen with human eyes, where you are asked, what you have learned, and you have your now past human lifetime, that you have just lived, shown to you, and you are told, paradise, para, dies, in order to be told, what you have done right, and what you have done wrong. That life is then summarized, and the evil, that you have learned in that lifetime, is erased from your memory, along with which human you were, but the good you have learned is retained. You are then sent back, onto this material plane, and locked inside another body, to learn some more. The kind of body and surroundings will vary, depending on whether you are to be punished and taught humility, or whether you are to be rewarded. You cannot remember what human you were previously, because that would cause you and everyone else, a lot of pain, for example if an old man died and came back as a baby, remembering who he had been, and went to see his wife, now his widow, from his previous lifetime, it would cause her, himself and his new parents, a lot of pain and would serve no useful purpose. Another reason, that you are not allowed to remember what human you were, is because, being the materialistic, selfish people that you are, if you could remember who you had been, you would go and try to claim what were your possessions. Wouldn't you? As the object of being here, is to learn to be unselfish, good and unmaterialistic, allowing you to remember would be counterproductive. Also, you wouldn't want to be able to remember being a murderer, or a rapist, or being murdered, would you? What you do remember is all the good that you have learned. All those things that you know are right, and that no one, in your present lifetime, has taught you you have learned in your previous lifetimes. If you live a good life, you advance and shorten your sentence. If you live a bad life, you go backwards and are punished. If you live a half and half type of life, you stay at the same place, same spiritual level, and just get a new body to use. The trouble with staying at the same place, or going backwards, is that you are running out of time to earn your pardon. The higher you climb, the harder it gets and the more chance you have of making a mess of things, and going backwards, so the more you need God's help. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3 Illustration of the Ladder to God and Heaven The bottom of the ladder are Satan and Earth, then female to lady, male to gentleman and finally Christ. An evil soul cannot learn everything it needs to know, as a man, or as a woman, it has to be a gradual progression, from one to the other, 
in order to learn and gain experience from both. After however many female lifetimes, of going forwards if good, and backwards if bad, that it takes the soul, locked inside a female body, to learn to be a perfect woman, in God's eyes, which means a perfect lady, wife and mother, when that human animal body, that it is using, dies, and the soul is taken on to the astral plane, it is congratulated on its achievement, and is then promoted and sent back into a male body. Once the soul gets a male body, it has to start all over again, from the beginning, but as a man, going forwards and backwards through many male lifetimes, until it learns to be a perfect man, that is like Jesus the Nazarite. Then, when that animal body dies, the soul is taken on to the astral plane, is congratulated on its achievement and sent home to the morning star, Revelation 2, verse 26 and 28, where it regains its real identity, family, memory, superhuman powers, freedom, and does not have to suffer being a human, anymore. It then lives forever, as its real self, with good people, and can travel freely around the universe, if it so wishes, or stay at home. The souls, that are locked inside female bodies, are closer to Satan than to God, on a spiritual level, because they have not yet learned the spiritual qualities, that they need to have, in order to be able to qualify to become a man. They are therefore much more easily manipulated and used by Satan, and have been used successfully, throughout history, to destroy relatively good men, for example Adam and Eve, Samson and Delilah, King Arthur Pendragon and Queen Guinevere and the list is endless, 1 Timothy 2, verse 14. Allowing yourself to be manipulated and used, by Lucifer, Satan, is what got you sent here. You must learn, willpower, not to allow yourself to be manipulated, and used by him, before you can go home. The more willpower you learn, to help you resist his influence, the higher spiritual level you attain. That is why men are on a higher spiritual level, and harder for him to use, and women are on a lower spiritual level, and easier for him to use. Men are supposed to love God first, and women second, keeping women under control and teaching them, by setting them a good example, as well as by words and advice, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 1 Timothy 2, verse 11 and 12. That is why God said, from the beginning, that women can never be equal to men, until they earn their own right to be a man, Genesis 3, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1 to 3 Surah 2, verse 228 and Surah 4, verse 34. Read the Gospel, Truth, of Thomas in Log 114, verse 20 to 26 slash King of Kings Bible, Thomas chapter 16. You cannot serve God and be a women's liber. The two things are totally incompatible, because God has said repeatedly that women are not men's equal. Genesis 3, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1 to 3, and 1 Timothy 2, verse 11 to 15, Surah 2, verse 228, and Surah 4, verse 34. They are also incompatible because they are complete opposites. Serving God is based on humility and accepting His teachings and women's liberation is based on arrogance and refusing to accept God's teachings. Man and not woman was created in God's image, and first. All of the great prophets were men, and so were all of Jesus' disciples. Now you know why. Blue for a boy, God's color, and pink or red for a girl, Satan's color, red dragon slash serpent. There are clues everywhere in life and in nature. All of the prophets were masters of their own households. The selfish soul has to be a woman first, to be taught, through motherhood, to be less selfish, and the meaning of lasting spiritual love, instead of human animal emotion. Once a woman becomes a mother, she should become less selfish, putting her child's needs first and her husband's too, because he provides for, and protects, her and his child. She has to learn self-sacrifice and an understanding of real love, instead of emotion, first. Timothy 2, verse 15. Men understand real, spiritual love, better than any woman. Men have already learned to love spiritually, whereas women are emotional, human-animal emotion. This is proved, by the fact, that when a marriage breaks up, 
The woman can have sex with someone else, fall madly, emotionally, in love with them, and never give her husband a second thought, whilst it takes an average man, between three and five years to get over the hurt, if he ever does. This is because the man's love is spiritual, real, deep and lasting, whereas the woman's is emotional, shallow, animal, and, like animals, only temporary, until she reaches a higher spiritual level, becomes a lady, and closer to qualifying to be a man, that is a perfect woman. That is why God, in his great compassion, usually takes the husband first, because the woman can get over the loss easier than the man could, if he took the wife first. The soul has to be a woman first, to prepare for being a man. Being a woman teaches, through the pain of childbirth, self-sacrificing and suffering, in the name of real love, crucifixion, which makes them become less arrogant and less selfish, bringing humility and tenderness. Girls were always brought up and taught to care for people, to teach them humility and love, through taking care of others, like Jesus taught by washing his disciples' feet, John 13, verse 5. Nurses are a very good example of this. Motherhood teaches self-sacrificing, by putting her children's needs first, if she is a good mother. The fading of a woman's beauty teaches her humility, and to change her values, from animal attraction and outward show, to needing to be loved for her spiritual qualities, instead of her looks, that is spiritual love, instead of animal attraction or lust. Women age, whilst men maturing become more distinguished, and less marred by an evil life. This is all designed to teach the soul to be a perfect lady, wife and mother, and to be humble and unselfish. A real lady, spiritual qualities, not money, or titles, has already learned special qualities, that are preparing her to become a man, in a later lifetime. She has grace and elegance, without arrogance, is 100% feminine, soft, warm, affectionate and loving, is self-sacrificing and humble towards her loved ones and people in general, is modest about her body, and does not exhibit her nakedness to anyone, except her husband, is a virgin when she gets married, saving her charms, unspoiled, for the man she loves, a woman, almost always, falls in love with, and never forgets, the man to whom she gives her virginity lst. Timothy 2, verse 15. A lady has progressed from being an animal and attracting people with sex, to wanting people to respect and be attracted to her soul, which is their real her. She has also learned the difference, between love and emotion, and last but not least, has learned compassion, which is a godlike quality, and the most important qualification needed, to become a man. The lowest male spiritual level, is above the highest female spiritual level, in terms of the understanding of spiritual matters of love and compassion, but, because a soul has had to start again, on becoming a man, there are women who appear to be more intelligent, than some men, in worldly matters. This is designed, so that the two sexes can help each other, on the upward climb. Mothers, being on a lower spiritual, and more human, physical, level, are equipped to take care of the physical needs, of the family's bodies colon feeding, cleaning, nursing, choosing and mending clothes, etc., and giving affection. Dads, being on a higher spiritual level, and less emotional, are better equipped to take care of the family's discipline, and spiritual guidance. Women, as opposed to ladies, are often more or less, adapting themselves to the morals of their partner, and changing when they change their partner, and they generally have no code of honor. People say that women can be vicious, callous, bitchy, catty, emotional, all of which are animal attributes, materialistic, scheming, have no compassion or pity, and have vicious tempers and tongues, hell, planet earth, has no fury like a woman's scorn. Man should firmly, but gently, like God does, use his superior strength and understanding, to maintain discipline and order. Women are more materialistic than men, and men just slave their lives away, to buy things for their women and some work themselves to death, in the process. Who wears the jewelry in a family, silly bits of yellow metal and colored stones, and who has the biggest wardrobe of clothes? Isaiah 3, verse 16 to 24. 
Once the soul has become a man, it then has to work towards perfecting its understanding of compassion, spiritual love and selflessness. It should be honorable and moral, fighting evil and injustice, and to protect its family, whilst working towards being a perfect, as far as is possible in hell, man, like Jesus. A soul is only as good as its word, and only has the same value as its word of honor. There is no such thing as a special word of honor, because every word should be honorable and the truth. You will not bear false witness, tell lies, Ten Commandments, and in Matt 5, verse 37, let your communication be yes, yes, no, number for whatever is more than these comes from, devil evil don't fool yourselves, with thinking that you are getting away with telling lies, because you are not, you are only hurting your own souls. The two sexes, in marriage, are supposed to become one flesh, Genesis 2, verse 24, Matt 19, verse 5 and no 12 1 Corinthians 6, verse 16, and soul mates, becoming not only one flesh, but also one soul, making one complete unified and indivisible body and soul, to help each other spiritually and physically, on their upwards and homeward climb. They are supposed to create a loving, stable environment, Garden of Eden, into which to bring children, and to teach their children's souls to be good, unselfish, compassionate, and to have an understanding of stable and lasting spiritual love. This teaches spiritual love, because in a good, God-fearing, family there is no incestual sex, only pure spiritual love. There are varying degrees of masculinity and femininity, and in order for the two, together, to make one perfect whole, and one flesh, they need to be complementary, as well as compatible. A man who is 100% male, needs a woman who is 100% female, and a man who is 75% male and 25% female, needs a woman who is 75% female and 25% male, so that, together, they make 100% male and 100% female, and make one whole flesh, Matt 19, verse 6 and Mark 10, verse 8. Female, pink male, blue one whole flesh, the two partners must really be soul mates, that is why Jesus could not find one because he was an odd man out, and did not belong here, in hell, becoming one soul, striving to be good, against all the world's temptations and opposition, clinging to each other, for spiritual survival and life, until their human death. The family is supposed to cling together, against all odds, come hell, earth, or high water Noah. Unfortunately, marriages are now based on material, and therefore superficial values instead of spiritual, pure love values, so they do not work. The partners stop trying and are tempted by adulterers, and money values, and the marriage breaks down. Both partners must keep God's commandments, and help each other to overcome temptation and difficulties. The man is supposed to set a good example for the family, and teach them, from his higher level of spiritual understanding, and the woman is supposed to learn, from him and help him to be a gentleman and to teach their children, how to be ladies and gentlemen. The wife should never try to undermine, and castrate, metaphorically, her husband, but should do her best to encourage him to be a man, 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 to 15. A family is like a ship, ark, and, if it is going to float and not get wrecked, it has to have a captain, father, like in the British Royal Navy, and a good first mate, wife cook and crew, etc. Just like a good first mate is invaluable to a captain, a good woman can help to make a good man, and a bad woman could break him, and vice versa, if he led her, by loving her more than God the divine navigator, to steer a straight course home. That is why a woman should love, honor, cherish and obey her husband, unless he is trying to get her to do wrong, through good and bad times, and not leave a sinking ship, but help with the bailing out until death, and learn from him, and help and encourage him to be good. From arrival in hell, earth, to qualifying to go home, everything is designed to teach unselfishness, by the perpetual crucifixion of self. When the self goes, and you are no longer addicted to material things, but prefer to be addicted to God, good, and spiritual joy and richness, the pain goes with it. The pain is attached to the self, 
to encourage you to lose it. When you have lost the self, you can go home, where everyone is unselfish, and everyone loves everyone, spiritually, and you can trust absolutely everyone, heaven. There have been misguided, by Satan, fanatics, throughout history, who have known that women were more evil, more easily manipulated by the devil, than men, and have killed them, whilst believing that they were doing God's work, by destroying evil women and their evil influence, that is prostitutes, etc. In so doing, they have made themselves more evil, than their victims. Only fanaticism, can allow the devil to be able to create this kind of totally illogical situation, in someone's mind. How can you possibly not be worse than a prostitute, if you become a murderer like Jack the Ripper, etc. Fanaticism, or a closed mind, always leads to trouble, especially religious, Satan's invention fanaticism, because it allows the devil to really get hold of the soul, and deceive it, into doing evil, whilst believing that it is doing it for God, hence these insane murderers, and religious wars John 16, verse 1 to 4. You must always be balanced, and must not submit to any overwhelming animal emotion. Remember that Satan talks to your animal body, so you must learn control. Jesus was perfectly balanced, spiritually, at all times, because he asked for, and received, God's help, especially when he was being struck and spit upon, and his human life was in danger, and you must do the same. God says, you shall not kill, except in self-defense real and non-imaginary, or as a punishment in accordance with God's laws and judgments. You must dissuade people from doing evil, by setting them a good example, or by shunning them, to make them ashamed of themselves, and love them into changing their ways. Never underestimate the power of the force of spiritual, divine, love. It is the greatest and most powerful force, in the whole of creation. It is also important, to understand the use of the force of love in respect of health. I have already explained, that your human parents' bodies made the body, human animal, that you are temporarily using, but that they are not really your parents, because their bodies did not make your soul, their real you, just as their parents' bodies did not make their souls. Call no man upon the earth your father, your father is in heaven, mad 23-9. That does not mean that you should disown each other. Every one soul came from the morning star, thousands of years ago, and that is why Christ said, that his body's mother, and his body's brothers, humans, were not his mother and brothers, but that the souls, people, that hear and believe his words, and put them into practice, keep the commandments and do God's will, are his mother and brothers and sisters, relatives. This means that the souls who want to be good, and live, and eventually go home, are his relatives and that the rest are not, because they want to continue to be evil, and, thereby, remain his enemy, and their souls are going to die, on the last day. This explains why the second commandment says, love your neighbor as yourself, and not just the people of your own household, Mark 12, verse 31. Your neighbor is not just the man next door, but also the man on the far side of the planet and everyone in between. From the time that Jesus began his ministry, right up until his human death on the cross, he called Mary woman, and not mother, John 2, verse 4 and John 19, verse 26. All souls are related, because they originally came from heaven, and it is the soul that is important, bodies are only prison cells, and worthless. Love all your relatives, not just those of your body. That person that you can see in trouble could have been your dead grandparent reincarnated. Shouldn't you be helping them? When a soul, being, has learned all that it can, in a particular body and environment, it is time to move on, to a new body and a new environment, to learn some more, and so, that body dies. The soul is then unlocked, from the body, and goes to the astral plane, and later on, it is sent back, into its next body, to learn something different. If the soul has been good, it gets a healthy body, and if it has been very bad, it can get a disabled or deformed body, as a punishment, to teach it humility. If you are given a healthy body, and you always do good, you will always be healthy, because your healthy spirit, within your body, will keep the body healthy. A healthy spirit, 
which lives always in the light, will keep its body healthy, until it is time for it to move on, to a new body and environment, to learn some more. The good die young. If you are given a healthy body, and you start to do evil, and to live in the dark, then your evil, unhealthy spirit, will poison the body from within, and it will become sick, which is part of the punishment, divine justice, for doing, or thinking evil. If you then stop doing evil, and come out into the light, and do God's will, your now sick body will heal itself, from within. So, if you start to become ill, you should recognize it for what it is that is a sign, that you have taken a step, in the wrong direction, stop, and, instead of running to the medicine cupboard, or doctors, ask God, where you have gone wrong, then follow his guidance and continue on the right path, and the sickness will get better. However, if you continue to go in the wrong direction, your illness will get worse and worse. Doctors, with their drugs, surgery and obscene machinery, temporarily relieve the body's physical symptoms, thereby allowing you to ignore God's signs, and continue going the wrong way, and so, unwittingly, by trying to play at being God, they are actually helping Satan, and doing you all a great deal of harm. If they weren't there, and or didn't profess to have the answers, you would all have to ask God to help you, which is exactly what he wants you to do, and is why he sent you the sign, of being sick, Deuteronomy 28, verse 58 to 61, in the first place. There are none so blind, as those who refused to see. Everything in life is for a reason. Seek and you will find that reason, but you have to seek in the right place, God, with all your heart, Jeremiah 29, verse 13. If you are given a sick body, as a punishment, karmic debt and you do good, then, your now healthy spirit will start to heal the body, from within, or, your punishment will be terminated, and the sick body will die, and you will get a new healthy one, depending upon the severity of your punishment in sickness. Human bodies have to die, or there would be no progress, no fresh starts, no way to control the population explosion, and also, no way to allow nature's natural process to keep the breed healthy, young and strong. You cannot have many more bodies, than there are souls to use them. Bodies were only designed to be prison cells for the souls, being slash jinns, and are themselves worthless. God has sent many clues for you about the fact that the physical reflects the mental and spiritual, one of which is the story, that God wrote, using the hand of Oscar Wilde, called The Picture of Dorian Gray, which illustrates it perfectly. This story of Dorian Gray and his portrait, and his deal with the devil, shows perfectly, that the physical, which Dorian transferred to the portrait, by making a deal with Satan, reflects the mental and spiritual. Every time Dorian did something evil, the painting of himself became more and more grotesque, evil-looking, wizened and wrinkled, until he could not bear to look at his own evil soul's effect on his body, portrayed on the canvas. There are other clues, in the story of Dorian Gray, about this reflection, and also about home. In the story, Dorian has a book sent to him, by his friend Henry. The book is about evil deeds, and how people that do evil deeds start to look evil. The reason why no one suspected Dorian, of doing evil deeds, was because he looked so handsome, young, innocent and healthy. They did not know that Dorian had done a deal with Satan, and that the painting was looking more and more regal and sick, instead of him. Dorian reads this book, in the evening, by the light of a single bright star, Revelation 22, verse 16 slash King of Kings Bible, Revelation 30, verse 16 until night falls, and he cannot read any more. This is a clue about home, because the only star, that it could have possibly been, is the morning slash evening star Venus, which is the brightest star in the sky, and can be seen before the sky goes dark, and all the others then appear. Doctors, by playing at God, keeping bodies alive, when they should have died, and the soul being slash jinn, should have received a new body are actually causing unnecessary suffering, by prolonging people's illnesses, and, thereby, also their punishment, and the pain they have to suffer. If they stopped playing at God, as they should, and let the body die, as God intended, the suffering would stop, 
and the soul, being slash jinn, would get a brand new body, human. As already mentioned in chapter 2, mankind must live with nature, in order to survive and to keep the race healthy. Unfortunately, as usual, mankind is living against God and nature, weakening the race, and filling the world with more and more sick and crippled bodies, thereby causing the souls, that then have to use those bodies, to have to suffer unnecessarily, just so that the selfish parents can have a baby. What about the rights of the poor soul, that is then forced to have to use that baby, body, and suffer being permanently sick or crippled? When nature ejects a baby, and it is ejected, born prematurely, it is for a very good reason, that is because the baby, human, is not going to be healthy enough, to be able to be used properly by a soul, being slash jinn, and therefore it is rejected. Then along comes faithless, insane man, who thinks he knows better than God, and builds obscene machines, to keep those babies alive, so that they can grow up, to Ezra's 6, verse 21, to be cripples, and or suffer from terrible diseases, or chronic illness, causing the souls, that have been forced to use those bodies, to have to suffer, and the parents too, with everyone else having to pay extortionate taxes, to pay for the expensive machinery, and the doctor's wages, etc. The doctors then, by filling the world with sick bodies, have insured for themselves and the pharmaceutical companies, a secure job for life. If those babies then grow up and have children, they then make the situation even worse, by passing on and multiplying, through their genes, the imperfections. Carry to its ultimate conclusion, the entire world would end up being sick and crippled with no one healthy enough to be able to work and pay taxes for, or personally take care of, the sick, or be able to grow food to feed themselves and the sick. The whole thing is self-defeating, with the ever-decreasing healthy population paying more and more taxes, to maintain the ever-increasing sick and crippled population, all of which is caused by a lack of faith. All you chronically sick and crippled people have your parents' selfishness, the doctors and your own and everyone else's insanity, and lack of faith, to thank for your suffering. When, if you let go, and they stop meddling, you could have a brand new, perfectly healthy body to use, instead of suffering, in your present one. When you break the rules, or have lack of faith, in God and His wisdom, you automatically cause yourself to suffer. There is also a very good reason, why, some people cannot have babies, and that is, either, because their genes, of their bodies, would create unhealthy babies, as explained above, or God either does not consider them fit to be parents, because they would teach a child the wrong things, or, he is punishing them for what they did, in their former human life, which could have been mistreating their children. Turn to God for your cures and answers, not to men. Natural medicine, creams, herbal remedies, etc. and the stitching of wounds setting of broken bones, delivering babies and nursing, are a natural part of loving and caring for one another. Because of this lack of real faith, in God and life after death, with people consequently clinging, desperately, to the present human life that they have, no matter what the cost, we now have a world full of sick people, and overflowing hospitals, and some very rich doctors and pharmaceutical companies, all of which is a terrific drain on society. Doctors are unknowingly assisting Satan, by helping people to continue to go the wrong way, to evil, because they are keeping people's bodies healthy, question mark, by artificial means. They too have underestimated Satan, been conned, and many sincerely believe that they are helping mankind, when, in fact, they have been deceived, and are actually working for Satan, and mankind's destruction. The road to hell fire is paved with good intentions. If doctors and surgeons are doing what is right, that is God's will, why do they suffer so much, from stress, that many of them are heavy smokers and drinkers, at best, and alcoholics at worst, abuse tranquilizing drugs and have nervous breakdowns. Stress is caused by a lack of faith, by fear and by going against God's will, not by overwork. Overworking causes physical tiredness, not stress. If they are so clever and know all the answers, as you seem to think they do, because you go to them for your answers, why don't they heal themselves, physician heal thyself. 
they cannot and they are not clever, and yet you go to them for help, instead of going to God, as you should do. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. The medical people have made human death, almost totally illegal, and have removed and hidden it away from society, and thereby made it an unfamiliar thing, to be feared and avoided, at any cost. Human death is a perfectly natural, necessary and good thing, and is unimportant, because you are not human. It should be a natural part of everyday life, and not something to hide away from view, and consequently to be feared. It is wh why your body dies that is important, the death itself does not matter, except if it is murdered, or you commit suicide. God takes the attitude, that if you want to prolong your own suffering, because you have no faith in him, and also extend your own sentence and punishment, by not moving on, to learn the new things, that you should be learning, then he will let you continue to punish yourselves. You are also, by doing this, wasting what precious, little time you have left, to earn your pardon. The fire is getting closer, by the minute. The answer, to every question in life, is with God. Don't look to humans for answers, or cures, look to your Maker. God is not just a body mechanic, like a doctor, he is the designer builder and master engineer. Doctors, surgeons and psychiatrists do not know how to make a human plus being, but God does. They do not even know what a soul, being slash jinn, is, or where it came from, or what a human animal is and the interrelationship, between the two. God does. Get it right with God, first, and then heal yourself, from within, or, get your punishment commuted, and get a new body to use, and a fresh start. Why punish yourselves? Question mark you can never beat God. If you could, he would be here, instead of you. Being afraid of human death makes absolutely no sense. As promised, earlier in this chapter, I am now going to explain, for the benefit of those people, who have made the wrong assumption, that is that I must hate women, how their logic, upon which they have based this wrong assumption, is totally illogical, and how those same people have no idea what real love is. If I hated women, and knowing, as I do, that, what they are doing now, is not only harming them now, but is ultimately going to cause them to be executed, then surely, if I did hate them, I would be telling them to carry on doing what they are doing, and advising people to take advantage of them sexually, and in other ways, so that they will be executed. Wouldn't I? What am I doing? I am putting myself, into a position, where I will have to suffer verbal, and possibly physical abuse from the ones who do not want to try to understand, in an attempt to help them to save their own lives, not mine, real love. What are those who falsely claim to love women doing? They are telling lies to women, because they are pathetic, telling women that they love them, to enable themselves to be able to steal sexual favors, and, thereby, are deceiving them, and leading them astray, causing heartache, creating unwanted babies and messing up women's minds and lives creating terrible havoc in the world. Who really loves you ladies? Me, or them? You decide. Now can you see your own illogic? 